And this was taken, um, I believe, yesterday on uh, 82220, and you see a fire burning inside, inside of the tree. The tree's not burning on the outside. Further proof of underground lightning, ULF. Look at, there's no fires going around, yet it's burning on the inside of the tree. This is, again, you see scarring in the background, but you don't see any fires nearby. The leaves aren't burning. There's no burning at the trunk but it's burning inside of the tree. This is the underground lightning they used up in paradise as well. And that was a picture from the Bay Area yesterday. And this is from um, pictures I took uh, back in November. No, not November. The fire was in November 2018. But uh, I got in up there to take these uh, somewhere around February, March, uh, three months after the fires when they were cutting them down. And you can clearly see, right, under the, the trees were burned only up to about 20, 25 feet. Uh, the Earth's aura is 25, 26 feet. And as I explained in the video I did on this, that the fires were coming from underground ULF, under uh, ultra low frequencies, lightning underground, and going up. And as I've said before, they can they can make lightning come from the ground, or they can bring it down from the sky. They've harnessed earth and it weathers energy for a very long time and here you see a tree burning from inside and you see it's only burnt up to that aura field of about 26 feet but it's clearly just like that other one burning from the inside and then just a reminder this is a picture i took up and on the way up to concow right above paradise and these are laser cuts folks this is just prima facie evidence uh, you see Plumas National Forest here by the Eel River this is prima facie evidence of an attack these are laser cuts. This is something you see like if you're up in the ski mountains and there was an avalanche, you'd see it taking out trees and stuff. But you can clearly see the burn marks. They were zip, 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 zip. And then they torch the car here. It takes 2,500 degrees to melt tempered glass. And you see no fire going around this. I mean, the fire would have to be totally enclosing this whole area to burn out this car. And uh, now I'll leave you with playing my video that I made back... Uh, about a year and a half ago about the underground lightning created to burn trees. We're seeing evidence, prima facie evidence again, that the same thing is happening again. It's not necessarily connected or doesn't have to be connected to smart meters as we're seeing it happen out in the force. Hey folks and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Well, let's get a little more into the paradise. This is number 55, I believe. And let's talk about lumber and logs and trees and what the heck are they doing. So you get an idea, folks. Sacramento is right here. Um, and we're going to zoom in a little bit to paradise. And up here is Redding where the car eclipse fires were. And then we're over here in Santa Rosa over in this area where the Lake County fires keep happening. The Mendocino Complex fires. Sonoma, Napa, Santa Rosa's down here. So this is all in this area where they want to put the trains in, they want to put the mega dams in, they wanted lumber and harvest. But let's talk about lumber. Um, but first, I want to give you an idea here of Paradise, so you know. So this is Chico in Orville. You remember the Orville Dam that uh, they had to evacuate everybody because uh, two years ago because of all the rains, the dam failed? That's Orville right here. And then here you see Chico. So when you're leaving Paradise, you're going down the hill from about 2,000 feet down here to 99, and you either go to Chico or you go to Oroville. There's not a, lot of, not, a lot of, not a lot of other places you can go to if you're escaping, which they said 52,000 or 27,000 uh, escaped. Now here what I want to show you is I want to give you an idea of how big Paradise is. I mean, look at all the, the, the cross grids here, folks. You see this? These are where people live. All these roads, these are people that aren't there anymore. They didn't move back in. We don't know where they are. They would have gone to Chico or Orville. We're not hearing from them. Look at folks. All these people, unaccounted for. Where are they? They haven't been let back in, or now they're finally opening up. But they opened the ice rink. Hey, wonderful. But look at this. This is all people here. And of course, the Freemason building's okay. The Christian church is okay. The Adventist hospital's okay. But the people aren't okay. All right, but what I want to bring your attention to, so here, and you can see getting out, they only had two routes basically to get out. 
once they got down the hill Skyway and 191 and this is the road 70 which I took up to the where they say the campfire started this is up here in uh, Polga you'll see Polga right here that's where they said the fire started went over to Konkow this is where the people jumped in the lake few made it out of Konkow all right and then they came down here the fire spread at 80 football fields a minute Yet the other th anomaly is the fire spent a whole day on uh, November 9th sitting there from people were stuck until 5, 6 o'clock at night and they, they'd be trying to get out. Um, so this fire moving at 272 miles an hour, 73 miles an hour, all of a sudden decided to park in paradise and uh, hang out for a while. And of course, uh, people said there were no winds. But here's what I wanted to show you, folks. And this is what really is, is grating here. And you see this is Concow here. But let me show you this. See all these patches here, folks? See all these patches? That's clear cutting. Those are all the forest being cut. All those patches are the forest being cut. All the trees are being harvested. Red Emerson and his, and his sons harvesting all the lumber. Look at it all, folks. Look at all the clear cutting going on everywhere here. All over, all the way up to Redding. Here's the Redding car. You can see them clear cutting the entire Sierras of the Ponderosa pines that are made for lumber, making buku buku bucks. All right, so let's get into the trees. Why are the trees so important? Now, of course, there's the money aspect of it. And uh, this guy, Red Emerson, is richer than Bill Gates and has more property than uh, Ted Turner. And, you know, from humble beginnings, this is Forbes setting the table here. And it talks about how we'll be there before the smoke is out. They make money from disasters, disaster capitalists. His two sons, George and Mark, pretty much run the business now. But uh, I remember Red Adair when he went into Kuwait with the, with the oil. We'll be there before the smoke is out, said Timber Baron Red Emerson. So he owns all the Southern Pacific. Uh, he bought from Southern Pacific all the rights. Uh, billion and a half in sales. Salvage timber. You see him working here and doing it all over the place. And then you've got Jenner, Jerry Moonbeam Brown signing on, signed a billion dollars to ease logging rules to thin forests. Now, notes the dates here, August 23rd. This is before the Paradise Fires. And then Trump says, oh, you know, you got to get rid of all the timber and all the stuff on the ground. It creates the fires. Even though it didn't burn any trees, folks. Only burned houses, only burned people, only burned cars. Didn't burn the Freemason building. All right, so fa facing deadly California tries, more logging, more logging, who's at benefit? And notice that way back here, May 11th or way back when, Governor Brown pledges to double forest thinning. He was planning this before the Paradise Fires. This is May 16th, 2018. So what's going on in Paradise? Harvesting. They're harvesting the lumber, folks. They're taking it. They're taking them to put away all the lumber here, and the people are not happy with it because they're going into people's homes, even though the trees are perfectly fine, and they're cutting them down. That's the same thing we noted uh, when we were up there a couple weeks ago. They were taking down perfectly good trees. And you can see the arborist mark trees, P1 for immediate hazards, P1, 2 for ones that could fall in a year. Now, we also noted that the trees, the bark was just damaged. The trees were not damaged. So why are they clear-cutting all the trees all around Paradise and in Concow? Residents complained down trees and branches were left on the property. The other question is, with all the winds, 273 miles an hour, folks, how come the streets are clean? Why are the streets clean? Why isn't there debris all across the streets? Why wasn't there debris all across the streets here in Santa Rosa? Anybody want to ask that question? But here's what I want to focus on right here. You see the wood here? Notice the bottoms. Notice the thickest ones down here. Look at the black on them. Now notice the bark is just cut, and here it's not, but here it is. These are higher up in the trees, but look at the black here. So this gentleman at... So this website, uh, Logic Before Authority, this came out January 5th, so yesterday... He's doing some real good work here on Paradise 2, and he's got a new theory that's very, very interesting and, and pretty compelling. Uh, 8,888 trees struck by lightning in Paradise. Now, I'm not sure where he got the number 8888, but he's postulating that it was lightning from the ground, tomography from under the ground, that caused these trees to be burnt from underneath, and that the, the, the energy field of these underground lightnings would get up about 20 feet, and that's why we're seeing 
the tree scarred. So just to give you a little background, remember the uh, paradise has the underneath is gold and silver underneath paradise. We know that. And gold is one of the most conductive, along with silver, of the highest thermal thermal is heat conductivity. So can they do lightning under the ground? Yes, they can. The lightning image is lightning from 10,000 frames you see here, but it can it come from the sky down to the ground up? The answer is both, that it can come from the underground lightning discharges. So this is definitely a possibility that these attacks and that the, the, the lasers coming down from the skies were igniting the underground charges. The lightning discharges in the atmosphere are familiar, but what about the ones underground? Quartz reacts to stress by producing electricity, but when electric current flows through quartz, it vibrates a frequency coincident with the watts of power supplied to it. Our planet was compared to a capacitor capable of being charged and discharged by external electric fields. That would be the lightning laser charge from above, an external electric field. A capacitor charge, capacitors are constructed by two conductors or plates separate by a dielectric insulator. Um, and it goes into how it works and whatnot. But I just want to show you, this is, this is very real. This is a very possibility that these were strikes from underground that hit these trees and took them out. And then, then the other strikes coming from the, from the nanobot swarming nanobot fire embers, uh, self-replicating, um, as well. Like, like, um, Angel had told us that there's many multiple, uh, attacks. It's just not one thing. So here we see on the ELF, uh, uh, extremely low frequency and very low frequency ELF and VLF. The research called for under this effort is to assess the viability of exploiting concept of electromagnetic induction to detect, detect an image subterranean features such as tunnels. So this is them looking in, looking down from the sky, and looking through the earth. We've all known that for finding uh, whatever they're needing to look for underground. But here, the physics and methods of modeling of generation of ELF, VLF waves from various sources. Number four, the physics of propagation and attenuation of the secondary fields above the Earth's surface, procedures and logarithms for inver inverting measured electromagnetic field information to obtain subterranean conductivity. Subterraneans below the Earth conductivity structure particularly aimed at identifying and characterizing man-made structures or natural voids. What'd that just say, folks? A logarithms for inverting measured electronic magnetic field information to obtain subterranean conductivity structure, particularly aimed at identifying and characterizing man-made structures and or natural voids. Uh, and so we can see that this information is very possible that this is this is what it. So here here's his video. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. And two, three, and four videos back, I discuss the way that they are using, uh, the, the way they're burning down the houses in California and the, using the uh, technology discovered by Tesla of creating basically lightning strikes under the ground. Uh, Tesla discovered that uh, there was layers of frequency realms that were across the Earth, and um, there's one that exists above ground up to around 22 feet, and that one's got probably something to do with some other things that burnt, but the one that there's another that's actually below ground, as you may know, uh lightning itself comes from it's it's ground based you'll have the charges little feelers that'll come uh that'll come up and i show this in uh, the second or third video back but they come down from the sky but the actual main charge comes from the ground and that is the kill charge um or the huge amperage huge voltage charge and so we're trying to, uh, many have been trying to explain, and I'm trying to get the message out about this. So I'd appreciate it if y'all guys would make sure some of these videos get to some other people that are still confused on how these houses burnt down. Um, everybody's seen these trees. I'm going to show you a, an image, a couple of images that you have not seen yet. That's absolute proof of concept. Uh, when it comes to these trees, uh, the trees were 
burnt from the inside out and the root systems themselves were burnt up. And this can, this happens, uh, when a light, when lightning strikes a tree. However, we know that lightning did not strike, uh, every tree in, uh, paradise as well as other places in California that this, place, this has happened as well as other places all around the world that this is currently happening. Um, but that's what it looks like. It looks like lightning struck, struck the trees because trees will burn on the inside out when lightning strikes them. Like this one you're looking at here. Like this one you're looking at here. Except for this was in paradise. Same thing with this one. That's the top part of it. That's the whole, tr well, mostly the whole tree. You can see that the foliage and everything is still there, but the tree is burning uh, heavily from the inside. You'll also notice that that tree in the area that it has that is on fire really bad inside and out has wire running across it. Metal. There's another one. These are all in paradise. Another one, you can see that up under the root system is completely toasted. Same here, same here. Y'all guys are familiar with this image. But you're not familiar with these images. Let me back on out here so you can see what we're looking at. This is the yard where they are taking all of the trees to in California they're in paradise this is what the yard looks like now looks like a lumber yard where the process and lumber and all does everything look normal to you does it if you zoom in come up here a little bit closer on these trees you're going to notice that that all the trees are burnt inside all of them are burnt at some level some more than others but they were all struck by lightning but we know that they've used a tesla like weapon to strike these trees as well as strike the lightning rods um, of the homes that all burnt down so you see this is how they did what they did. This is an example. This is a tree that's been knocked over, knocked down, and the inside is roasted like it was struck by lightning. Same thing we were seeing with the logs. Same thing. The lightning poles throughout the city that were burned up, right, like this one. And all the lightning poles going down through the streets like the one on the left on the bottom is on fire the one there's another one the one on the left there's the one on the right on the bottom is on fire the one on the bottom of the right is on fire and about to fall the one on the right on the bottom is on fire the one on the right on the bottom the one on the right on the bottom is on fire and about to fall, go all the way through and I could go on and on here but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come back out. This is the railings that were near the dam. Do you remember when I made the video saying that the river was boiling? Well, interestingly enough, that is what electricity does to water, of course. is When it's hit with a charge, it will boil. Now, all the railing posts as you can see, the foliage behind them is not burning, yet the posts are all burning. You see? All the posts are burning. And strangely enough, of course, there is this long metal conductive, electrically conductive metal uh, fence that is running along all of these. So what it, it, it specifically drew the charge 
that was cast underground into these posts and into this metal railing. This will explain to you how the bridges burnt. Remember the bridges with the wood on them? There was no no fuel around, no, no trees or grass really around, but the bridges burnt the wood part and some of the metal warped and things like this. Here is, you can check this out right here. This is, uh, this is actually rocks, strangely enough, that are on fire. Rocks on fire. And that is very strange. Obviously, these rocks have a very high metal content for some reason. But, uh, or certain minerals of some kind for some reason.